Okay, welcome in. We have a really fun miniature game to talk about today versus Jacques Misset with the white pieces and Johan's Onquist with the black pieces. Sorry if I mispronounced those. Uh, I'll put the details in the description below. Uh, Jacques uh, with the white pieces opened with e4, obviously a move we've seen frequently throughout chess history, and black responded with the Scandinavian defense, which is just pushing d5 and challenging this, this white pawn in the center. I don't really enjoy playing the Scandinavian because it allows this immediate uh, e takes on d5, um, and there are a couple of options here, but probably most common that you'll just see around is queen takes back on, on d5. Um, and the problem here is it allows uh, knight to c3, which is what, what white played. Um, and this kind of highlights a big issue that I think uh, face a lot of beginners. Um, you sort of think of your queen as the most powerful piece, which it is. Um, but then you think, OK, I want to get it out early and have it be a part of the game. But the problem is, is when you develop your queen early, it allows these kind of minor pieces to attack it and develop on their own. So, you know, you end up making a bunch of queen moves while your opponent just develops their pieces and, and gets gets everything going. So um, you obviously have to move your queen to save it from the knight. One common move is queen to a5. This will pin the knight if the d pawn ever moves, pins it to the king. And then maybe this bishop can, can join and create a battery. Um, but here, black just played a totally safe and brought his queen back uh, to d8. Um, so, you know, now it's it's white's move. Uh, and white already has a piece out. So, you know, this is kind of why I don't I don't really like playing this this line for black. So white tried to continue to keep uh, his advantage by playing d4. Um, the pawn is nicely protected by the queen, so it cannot be taken by the black queen. Um, and the pawn is uh, nicely controlling these two critical squares in the center. Um, black countered uh, with uh, knight to c6. And uh, this is actually a mistake. We're going to see why in a second. Um, before punishing that mistake, white played knight to f3. Um, just developing another piece, and Black responded with Bishop to g4. The idea here, you know, it seems like a good move because Bishop, the Bishop is deep into white position. It's on the fourth rank, and it's pinning the Knight to the Queen. Um, so, so that seems, you know, like like a good idea. But we're going to see why um, that actually it does not work out. Um, white plays the move that punishes uh, Knight to c6. Um, white just plays d5, which which obviously attacks the knight. Um, and now, you know, the pawn is really nicely protected by the knight and the queen. It can't be taken by black's queen. And now black has to move this knight, which is not what you want to do in the opening. You want to move as many different pieces as possible, get your pieces out, instead of kind of moving the same pieces over and over. Um, so uh, black has a couple of options here, but actually goes with what looks like a good move, uh, knight to e5. This attacks the pin piece, which generally is what you want to do when you are pinning a piece. Um, if you add more attackers onto it, obviously that piece cannot move, so it increases the chances of you actually taking it. But here, uh, this is actually a losing move. Um, so see if you can uh, find uh, the way that white wins here with white's next move. Okay, so generally not a good idea in chess to forget about pins, uh, but here that would actually serve you best if you just ignored the pin and play knight takes on e5. And here the path to the queen is wide open and black indeed, you know, after you see white abandoning the pin, you have really have no choice but to just take the queen on d1. Um, but now the move you have to see to break the pin, you play bishop to d5 with check. And this is, this is trouble for black. Um, there are no squares for the king to move to. Uh, they're all either blocked by his pieces or, you know, the, the bishop is attacking it. So black can only block. Um, here, you probably don't want to play. It doesn't look like you want to play queen to d7 because the bishop can just take it. Um, and then the king can't even take the bishop back. So instead, black played what looks like a more natural move. Uh, he played c6, which blocks the pawn. And now white uh, takes advantage of his very advanced central pawn. Um, which again, allowed to get so uh, um, advanced because of uh, Black's mistakes in the opening. And White here just plays uh, c6. Forgot to turn my light on. Let me turn this. Oh, ooh, it's tricky. There we go. That's a little bit better, huh? So uh, now uh, it's sort of tricky to think about what you want to play for Black. Looks very natural to play, you know, capture on c6 again, but then you run into bishop takes on c6, and now you have no choice. You have to block with the queen, and uh, white is taking the queen, putting the king in check, and, you know, king has to move to d8, and here there's a number of ways to continue just taking taking advantage of, of the advantage. Uh, knight to f7, uh, you know, forks the king and the rook. That's one way to do it. Another way is just if you want to keep your bishop here in this awesome square, you just take on, on d8 or d1 with the king, and now white is up two pieces, two pawns, and black's king is totally not safe. So black did not want to go into this. Um, so instead, 
Black tried to create an escape square for his king, which seems reasonable because the king is in trouble because he can't move anywhere. So Black kind of got his queen to safety and simultaneously opened up uh, an escape square by playing, playing queen to c7. But this uh, actually is a total mistake because it allows um, a, a really nice finish from white. Um, and here, you know, I think the move that we would all play, um, white calmly just takes on b7 um, with the pawn and opens up this awesome discover check uh, from the bishop. So again, you don't want to block with the queen because you're going to go into the same thing. So um, black, this is why kind of black evacuated the, the d8 square with his queen so his king could could move there. Um, but now it is quite simply uh, just all over because it is mate in one with knight to f7. The knight is checking the king, the bishop is slicing this way, and the pawn, which has um, impressively marched all the way um, from d2, is protecting uh, c8, and the king has nowhere to go, and the game is over. Um, and a pretty cool checkmate, because you can see black has a lot of really powerful pieces nearby the king, and white just has a bishop, a knight, and a pawn. Uh, but that's all it takes, and it, sometimes even these powerful pieces are preventing the king from actually moving and escaping. If the queen was not on you know, c7, the, the king could maybe escape and it's going to be tough because white's bishop is coming into the game but but still the king maybe has some better better chances um but but that's that's neat and i want to note if you you know you saw this position and you thought okay the best move is just taking um and promoting promoting my pawn this would totally work too the king has nowhere to go so the queen has to block then you can play knight f7 king tries to escape up the board bishop develops with check king escapes even further up the board and now you can take the queen for free and checkmate is going to quickly follow for the black king um, you know, white is up a lot of material and has uh, plenty of attacking pieces near the king. So this would be fine too. Um, but in chess, it's always good to find the fastest and easiest way to win. And here that is just mate in one with knight to f7. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, kind of a fun game. Um, a good example of the Scandinavian gone wrong. Um, and we'll see you next time.